right into this. The United Nations top human rights official gets right on Venezuela abuses except for one thing. Who is this guy? Michelle Bachelet. Now, Michelle Bachelet is defending the fact that Venezuela and Nicolas Maduro are abusing Venezuelan people. Why are they doing this, people? Why are the United Nations now is all of a sudden waking up to what is happening in Venezuela? I will tell you why and exactly the reason why. Because the one that is looking good and the one that is looking good in the eyes of the world and the one that has been doing something for the Venezuelan people and the one that wants to end socialism and wants to end the rising of socialism with the four of Pablo and the one that wants to stop the, you know, human trafficking, human smuggling, child trafficking, and also the mitric tons of cocaine that is being moved around the world. The ones, the, the country that wants to stop that is the United States. That is the arch enemy of the United Nations and China. So all of a sudden now, <clears throat> there, is, there is a polit political interest of the United Nations to go in there and to save the Venezuelan people. Wow, why you haven't been doing that for the past five, four, three, two, the last year, United Nations? Why you haven't been doing anything of that? And this has to do a lot, a lot. It has to do a lot with the situation, how Nicolás Maduro is managing the pandemic and is managing his own people. Remember yesterday that we were talking about that he was preferring a celebration and that he was stopping the supplies from coming in because he wanted to celebrate something else. He prefers celebrating something else that saving his own people from this catastrophe of the pandemic in Venezuela. Yes, Venezuela is having problems with, you know, COVID. And this is what uh, Michel Bachelet uh, statements and a lot of statements that he's been saying. Uh, one of the things was uh, this Michel Bachelet is from uh, Argentina, and he's saying that there's going to be a catastrophe in Venezuela if nothing has been done. The article goes by saying, too, that the United Nations reports of human rights Atrocities by Venezuela dictatorship have gone almost unnoticed amid to the news of COVID-19 pandemic, but they deserve attention because except for one major flaw, they are among the most uh, damning indictments of the Venezuelan tyranny I've been seeing lately on the July 2nd to July 15th reported by the United High Commissions of Human Rights. Michelle Bachelet came after an inquiry of last year in which her, her office documented at least 6,856 6, suspicious deaths and extrajudicial executions by government security forces between January 2018 and May of 2019. So, all of a sudden, now the United Nations wants to save Venezuela? Wow. Why? Why all the way to now? Why you're waiting all the way to now? Why you haven't done anything in the past? God bless William Barr. God bless William Barr. That's why yesterday I did a video that you guys don't need to worry about what Nadler and Veronica Escobar are saying. They are, you know, they're insignificant. Really, they are. William Barr has been the one that has been pushing the Venezuela situation and also how Venezuela is allying with Iran, Iraq, China, and and. In Russia, but you guys are going to be amazed on what Venezuela is doing now with Nicolas Maduro and has been doing this since 2019, but now they're pushing it again. And how all these countries, how they're feeling so arrogant to do whatever they want in the world is because China, it is pushing and it has a lot of power right now with technology, with nuclear weapons, and also allying with none other than North Korea. Why all of a sudden it is an interest by the United Nations to help the Venezuelan people because of the alliance that is existing now with North Korea, with China, with Russia, with Iran, and Iraq. They're begging the United Nations to go in there. Why before there was no alliance 
And the only one that has been exposing this, it is William Barr that put a bounty on Nicolas Maduro for $15 million and also a bounty of $5 million on the prime minister, corrupt and also assassin prime minister Michael Moreno of Venezuela, the prime minister of justice. And this comes with this. This is amazing how every day we're developing news that is so relevant to knowing what is the medieval plan of all these communist countries. This. The New York Times releases this article says, you United Nations uh, experts warn Venezuela it could be a breach of North Korea sanctions. Why? Because they're trying to ally. Venezuela is trying to ally with North Korea. That is amazing. And this has been happening since 2019. But the article of the New York Times go on, goes on and says, UN investigators moder moderating the compliance with sanctions of North Korea are looking into a possible military and technology deal. Pyongyang and Venezuela had have been warning Caracas that it could be a violation of United Nations Security Council resolutions. Absolutely. And they're not going only to sanction and they're not going only to complicate the situation, but other 50 countries are going to be sanctioned by the United States and by a lot of countries. And to previously unreported letters, the, uh, the, uh, the article goes on and says, the Venezuela UN ambassador Samuel Moncada, in October of last month, and seen by Reuters, an independent panel, the UN the UN experts asked for specific terms of an agreement to spell out the UN sanctions that could bar such a deal. It goes on by saying the probe comes and U.S. sanctions on the South American country intended to force out President Nicolas Maduro over allegations his rig. Uh, his 2018 re-election and increasing diplomatic isolation are pushing Venezuela to deepen ties with the United States adver adversaries like Iran and North Korea. What is going on with Venezuela? This is why it is so important that you guys re-elect the president of the United States because they have William Barr and they have my Pompeo, that they are the ones that they want to get these kind of animals into prison, Nicolas Maduro, Michael Moreno, the ones that they're pushing for socialism, for communism, for world destruction and nuclear world weapons. Nicolas Maduro wants to ally with North Korea again. And he doesn't care that more than 50 countries are going to be sanctioned. Also, Venezuela and Maduro wanted to celebrate this negotiation on militarization uh, militarization renewal with Nick with uh, with the Korean uh, leader with North Korean leader this is amazing how are you doing this in front of the eyes of the world and this comes with this article back look at the look at the look at the date October 2 of 2019 this has been this has been happening for a little while now. This has been happening for a little while now. And it comes to tell you that these negotiations on militarization and doing military drills for, you know, for nuclear weapons with Kim Jong-un from North Korea and Nicolas Maduro has been happening for a little while. These agreements, they don't care about the sanctions. This wakes up another thing. What is North Korea trying to do agreements with Venezuela? The only president that has stepped in, that the only president that has stepped in in North Korea has been Donald Trump. And could this be a, a horrible betrayal to the United States of America? Yes, it could be. The article goes on and saying, North Korea and Venezuela have signed a series of agreements pleading a military and technological, techno, technological cooperation. Horrible. A news report said on Wednesday that the two countries grapple with economic sanctions and growing international isolation. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro announced on Twitter that Diosdado Cabello, president of the country, a nation, national constitu constituent assembly, signed the agreements during a trip 
to the communist nation last week, according to the Radio Free Asia report. This, people, it is trouble. If it is happening again, and if they're trying to do it again, they are destabilizing economical agreements. Also, they are distracting the United States from their main purpose, that is to end COVID, one, to help COVID, two, to end the sanctions, and three, to stop the war on socialism and to stop the bounty on Nicolas Maduro. Man, I'm getting shadow banned like I don't, I haven't got shadow banned like this in a little while. And this is the most amazing thing about all of this. The most amazing thing about all of this is that the one that is going to get more complicated due to this situation is the United States because they're going to try to take decisions of if if this, if this happens, the United States is going to try to have the hardest decisions on putting sanctions on more than 50 countries. Amazing. Amazing. So you got to watch out for this. It's not only Venezuela, Iran, Iraq, China, and Russia. Now you got nuclear weapon country, communist country, led by Kim Jong-un, North Korea. This is difficult. This is so difficult because United States citizens are so hooked on what is happening with Black Lives Matter that it's a complete, absolute distraction. And we are not focusing, or you guys are not focusing on this. On the meantime, a lot of Republicans were worried about why William Barr is not was not defending himself. Why William Barr was not stepping up. Why he let uh, these uh, Democrats step all over him. William Barr does not care about what Veronica Escobar says and what, you know, dumbass Natler is saying. He cares about this. This is this has William Barr's face all over it. This is what William Barr has been doing trying to prosecute and trying to find trying to find Nicolas Maduro to take him out. He has more bigger problems to talk into Nadler and talking to Veronica Escobar. Amazing. You guys need to watch about this. Read more about this little situation that is happening. In another article, this has to do with this. Again, Bad relationship. These communists and socialist co countries, they are so troublemakers, man. Troublemakers. They only find, you know, to cause problems. That is the number one priority, to cause problems. Venezuela breaks diplomatic relations with Colombia over aid, and Maduro says that. Why this has been a lot of problems, and it has to do a lot of the accomplishments with William Barr. God bless you, William Barr. Thank you so much for what you're doing and fighting all these socialist parasites. William Barr was the one that pushed for this man, Nicolas Maduro, to get arrested and to save the Venezuelan people. And one of the things that has affected Nicolas Maduro is the accusations of the United States against Nicolas Maduro for working with an organization that is called La Farc, that they're trafficking metric tons of cocaine around the world. Now that William Barr has said that and has put that on the table, the world is watching Nicolas Maduro, and Nicolas Maduro is having problems with the border with Colombia and this organization that is La Farc. So they're complicating his pockets. And because they're complicating his pockets, Nicolas Maduro is having problems with the Colombian border. Not only that, I told you guys that in the sea, during the week I told you that in the sea, one of the boats that it was taking, one of the boats that it was in the sea trying to help islands with COVID uh you know uh laboratory equipment it was hijacked by pirates that supposedly they come from venezuela now 
Maduro is complaining that the that the Colombian people uh, attacked one of the Venezuelan consulates. That is not a Venezuelan consulate. They don't have consulates. It's more like a, like a Venezuela uh, uh, office for help. You know, Venez you know, that's something like that, something to that effect. And, you know, Nicolas Maduro is complaining that Colombian officials went over there, hijacked that office, took really private documents. So the relationship right now with Colombia and Venezuela is really rispid. They're having a lot of problems. Venezuela is a troublemaker of the world, not the Venezuelan people, the Venezuela Socialist Party that is rigged and is taken over by Nicolas Maduro. What has this has to do? And not only that, Nicolás Maduro is pleading for help to the Continental Organization, an organization that Chávez, Hugo Chávez, and now Nicolás Maduro has never supported. Now they want help. And they want help by the United Nations. The United Nations, strategically, right now, Michel Bachelet, one of the commissioners for the United Nations, an Argentinian commissioner, now all of a sudden wants to get in there and help. <laughs> ay, 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 these people, man. These people. These people, now that they see that the United States is going to save the Venezuelan people, now that they see that William Barr is doing something about it, now the United Nations wants to do something about it, ah, isn't that a coincidence? In another news, and this is really important for you guys to know. Ah. Right here. Chinese foreign minister accuses U.S. politicians of pushing for a new Cold War. Wow. Wow. So the United States is pushing for a Cold War. This is how people from the left think. This is how their brain has a peanut. And that is, that is the most that they have, a peanut, a little peanut. And this is, people, how they're making the world think that the United States is the one that is pushing for a Cold War because of the sanctions, because of the international agreement that is not benefiting you, China. You were getting 500 billion in comparison to what the United States was getting, that it was 100 billion. That was not an advantage, right? That was a good deal by Obama. And now that everything is back to correct and everything is back to normal, this Chinese foreign minister accuses politicians of the United States that they are pushing a new Cold War. And he said this statement. It says, uh, the Minister of International uh, Relations is saying that he's not going to put the world in an initiation for a Cold War like in the 70s. We are not going to be imprudent. And also, we will act cautiously with uh, the greater attitude of the United States. But the United States is being hostile. So if we need to react, look at his response. But he's saying this, we are not going to be imprudent. And also we will act, we are going to act cautiously. And if the, if the attitude of the United States continues, of being hostile to us, we will react energically with the government of the United States in the accusations that they're coming straight from the White House. Is this a threat? How do you guys take it? Is this a threat by the Prime Minister of International Relations of China? Is this a threat? Because everybody in the world now knows, and thanks to Mike Pompeo, what the Chinese Communist Party has been doing with the world. 
And now that you feel the pressure, because a lot of countries, more than 50 countries, have ally with the United States, almost something like that effect. And the powerful countries like this, Japan, South Korea, the UK, the EU, the European Union, Taiwan, Australia, Australia, New Zealand. All of these countries are allying Germany, Italy, Spain. All of these countries are allying with the United States because they know what you have been doing, creating a, a weapon that is called now COVID, killing humanity and absolutely affecting the economy to create your economical collapse, part of the new world order agenda, the 2030. But let's read again what he says. He says this. He says, China will not put the world in the initiation of a cold war. And he says, like in the 70s, we are not going to be imprudent and we will act cautiously if the attitude of the of, if the hostile attitude of the united states continues we will react energically to the government of the united states and the decisions they are taking over by the white house is that a threat china it is an absolute threat. What? With that, you're threatening that they need to stop? Saying that you were the one that created the virus? Saying that you are the one that is doing military drills in the Chinese Sea and trying to take over the Chinese Sea? Saying that you are the one that is doing uh, nuclear testing in the Chinese Sea? Saying that you are the one that is working with Russia to have a satellite outside of space that it can eliminate other satellites that interfere with your technology work, saying that the United States is saying that you do our practices and also drills of the 5G and the Chinese Sea. You're mad because the truth is coming out. And not only that, you infiltrate it and you put two Chinese communist uh, of people trying to do espionage on the laboratory in Houston that they got caught. And now you're saying that the United States is being hostile to you? You were the one that contaminated the United States with this COVID, putting more than 50 million tests on people and more than 4 million people infected, and you are the one that's trying to play the victim? One of the strategies that I have told you about socialists, this is why I don't put attention to liberals. I don't put attention to attacks. I don't put attention to all these, uh, you know, activists, uh, influencers, whatever they are from the left. One of the strategies of them is to victimize themselves, to victimize themselves, to make themselves feel, oh, I'm the victim. Oh my God, I feel so. Oh my God, you're attacking me. You're harassing me. You're in my space. One of the strategies from them is to make always think about they're attacking me. They're constantly harassing me. They're constantly doing this to me. This is a clear example of that. And yes, Mr. Prime Minister of Foreign Relations, you are threatening. The United States were saying, yes, we will act cautiously and we will not be imprudent. But if the hostile attitude from the United States continues, we will react energically. What is reacting energically for you guys? Remember, my Pompeo and William Barr and the president of the United States of America, Donald Trump, had never talked about, never, they have never talked about a Cold War. The only ones that they are projecting that statement has been China and Russia. They're constantly talking in the United Nations. Sorry to forget that. They're constantly talking about this, this, this phrase, Cold War, Cold War cold war constantly saying it 
They're provoking to make people think that there's going to be a Cold War. The United States is not doing anything and is not even being hostile. Why you're getting your feelings hurt? Because you got sanction of what you're doing? Why are you getting your feelings hurt? Because you've been discovered of the corruption that you're being done and you have been killing people with your Chinese virus? That's what you're saying? And the article goes on on saying this. Time magazine, the U.S. should give up its wishful thinking of changing China. That is what the foreign minister, Wang Ji, said, warning that some in America were pushing relations to a new Cold War. When? You tell me, Wang Ji, when one of the <coughs> leaders, William Barr, Mike Pompeo, Donald Trump, when have they have said Cold War with you, China? Just name me once. You're the one that is saying it all the time. And it's saying China has no intention to change the U.S. nor to replace the U.S. Of course not. You have no intention to change the U.S., you communist, you know, parasite. You have no intention to change the U.S. nor to replace the U.S. You only have the intention to kill the American people with your virus. That it was created by your communist party. That is your intention. Your intention is not to help the United States. You are butthurt because Donald Trump came in there and put a fair deal for the American people. You were taking profit 500 billion in comparison to 100 billion that the United States was getting. You're butthurt because of that. And then the article goes on and says, it is also wishful thinking for the U.S. to change China. Wang said Sunday during his annual news briefing on the sidelines of the National People's Congress meetings in Beijing. He also criticized the United States for slowing its nuclear negotiations with North Korea and warned it not to cross Beijing's red line. Oh, another threat. He warned, man, I'm getting censored. He started talking about China and I'm getting censored like you guys don't even imagine. And he warned the United States <laughs> not to cross Beijing red lines on Taiwan. Mm. Taiwan was waking up and saying, we don't want the 5G. What are you trying to do, China? You're trying to put a threat on, on Taiwan? You're trying to put a threat on Taiwan? Trying to make the Taiwanese, Taiwanese people be scared a little bit? Because you're talking about the United States. That you said he also criticized the United States for slowing its nuclear negotiations with North Korea. What is your concern with North Korea? That is a negotiation that is occurring between the United States and North Korea. You have nothing to do with it. Why are you trying to accelerate this negotiations with nuclear weapons? Probably they're slowing down because North Korea wants to work with socialist Nicolas Maduro. Mm. And you're pushing it? No, 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 no. You got caught again. You got caught again. This is why William Barr, Mike Pompeo, they are doing an excellent job on disguising these people. All of these people, they have a medieval and machiavellical plan. And these three people, they are practically saving the world from these socialist and communist leaders. Donald Trump, my Pompeo, William Barr. The article goes on on saying this. The U.S. should give up. It's, look at this. It's an order. It's not, it's not a statement. It's not a request. It's an order. The audacity and also the arrogance from the Chinese Communist Party, it is amazing. And you are mad 
because they are blocking all your entrances to do your machiavellical plan of the 5G with Huawei. All the countries that you wanted to emphasize the 5G and initiation plan, you got blocked. And you got blocked because of the excellent work that Mike Pompeo is doing with Dominic Rav of the, of the UK. And now they got the EU on their side, the European Union. You are mad. So you're threatening now that if the United States, the first threat that you said, we are going, we're not going to be imprudent. And also we are going to act cautiously. But if the United States continues with this hostile attitude towards the Chinese Communist Party, we are going to react energically. Not only that, you started putting threats of you don't cross the red line with Taiwan, the United States. And the last threat that you put, the minister of, of uh, the foreign uh, minister, Wang Ji, he said, there's a warning that some in America pushing relations of a new Cold War. But you said you are wishing and thinking of changing China. There's so many threats on your speech. So many threats that Wang Ji is putting on the speech to the United States. Remember the threat that just happened with Iraq and Iran. That they say we're going to attack and we're going to counterattack to get revenge for the assassination of the General Qasim Soleimani. The United States is right now they're trying to bully the United States, trying to get them by these five or six countries that they're communist countries, troublemakers, practically. And the statement goes on by saying, China has no intention to change the U.S. nor to replace the United States. It is also wishful thinking for the United States to change China. Wang said Sunday during his annual news briefing on the sidelines of the National People's Congress meetings in Beijing. He also criticized the U.S., for changing the nuclear negotiation with North Korea and warn it to not cross Beijing's uh, red line on Taiwan. Warn. Again, this is the same article. You know why, Wang Ji? Do you know why the United States is being hostile to you? Not only because of your contamination of COVID around the world and trying to destroy the United States and destable the United States economically to form an economical world collapse. Not only that, but because of this, last week, my Pompeo flew in an emergency flight all the way to the UK to talk to Dominic Rapp because they found two hackers from the Chinese Communist Party that they were arrested, sent by China to try to hack an espionage to a Houston laboratory where they have possibly the cure for COVID, or they have it already. And this is one of the reasons why Houston has closed, and I applaud Houston, has closed their consulate. United States orders by the New York Times, this, uh, this uh, article said, the United States orders China to close Houston consulate, citing efforts to steal trade secrets. <laughs> the Trump administration accused Chinese citizens of stealing scientific research and told the country diplomats in Texas to leave Beijing warn and it will, it, it will retaliate. Washington, the United States has abruptly ordered China to close its consulate in Houston, accusing diplomats of aiding economic espionage and the attempted theft of scientific research as the Trump administration sharply escalates and moves against China. China bowed to retaliate, calling the action illegal. Hours after the administration issued its orders on Tuesday, the consulate employees burned the papers in open metal barrels. And it, con and it also in a courtyard in Houston building, prompting police officers and firefighters to rush to the area. The move comes as President Trump's campaign strategies and anxious about his failures of the pandemic are pushing a comprehensive anti-China message and an appeal to Mr. Trump supporters. No, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong with the right, the last thing. I will tell you why. What do you think that he's going to do? What do you think that he's going to do? After you sent two Chinese people to infiltrate and an espionage to take away 
one of the most valuable things that is in the world, that is practically probably the cure for COVID. And you think that the United States is going to be like, oh, thank you, China. That was a nice espionage, uh, you know, attempt. I will see you at coffee, Xi Jinping and Wang Ji. The hell you're talking about? Of course you need to be prosecuted. Of course you need to be held accountable. Absolutely. And, and you know, and the problem is that as time goes by, people, threats are escalating every time. As time goes by, there's no, the, the doors are closing for the Chinese Communist Party, for the socialist uh, and communist uh, countries. The doors are closing. There's no exits. There's only one or two exits, and they are trying to, you know, get through those exits. So because the doors are closing, the threats are escalating. Last week, a world threat by the Iraqi government and the Iranian government against the United States that they are going to retaliate. Now, Wang Ji is threatening constantly the United States to stop. They don't want a cold world, cold war. But if you continue to threat the Chinese government and to be hostile to the Chinese Communist Party, we are going to energically react. What is energically react? Not only that, don't cross the red line in Taiwan, the United States, because if you cross it, we're gonna have a problem. Amazing how the threats continue in another article international article we go to this people before we go to the COVID solutions because that is really important news i'm living i'm leaving the COVID solutions in the COVID vaccine lastly and this is what is next in your country so joe biden has a long list of qualified female vice president candidates so who he will pick, who he will pick, article released by The Conversation. So the candidates that they're strongly, strongly uh, being said is Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, and a humongous speculation that is strong, that has been a, a speculation for quite some time now, but right now is getting more, you know, they're catching attention to a possibility, a possibility of her, her, because Joe Biden said that it's going to be a woman, of her, being the candidate. So you got Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, that they are the most strongest ones to be vice president candidates. But who do you think that they're hiding and they're possibly going to be asking her if she can be a vice president candidate? Michelle Obama, hiding. You don't see her in these pictures. But according to sources of the... Uh, of the New York Times and the Washington Post, they are saying that a speculated decision and a strong decision is gonna be taken this week and it's going to be a surprise. They put on the bottom, possibly Michelle Obama will be a vice president candidate. It is, I will say probably is accurate, probably it's not. During last week, uh, President, uh, ex, uh, Former President uh, Barack Obama had a meeting with Joe Biden, just backstabbing President Trump and saying how badly he has managed COVID and la la la. We don't know what it was talking behind closed doors. But now Joe Biden has a strong decision to take and the decision is between these three women, speculated uh, Michelle Obama and also a confirmation that one of the two is going to be choosing between Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren. The three are horrible, but, you know, that is what is being said right now. So, 
we go we go to the main cream and butter right now this another news cuomo my god this guy's got so many problems in the new york so many so many problems he has in new york man probably one of the worst governors uh in history probably the worst governors in history in uh, in new york and apparently there was a concert on saturday that you know uh cuomo got so upset that you know he he's uh it's kind of like saying that a lot of people are going to be arrested because of this this concert that it was in saturday that uh there was no social distance and there was a lot of things going on like kind of like the riots and the looting from black lives matter and the clap party and the twerking that it was occurring and that viral video that occurred you know last week i think so by a lot of people not keeping social distance so the article says uh it's released by the new york uh mbc msnbc hamptons uh a p appalled Cuomo says criminal charges may come from New York a drive-in concert. The town of Southampton is going to have a problem. The promoters are going to have a problem, Cuomo said on Tuesday. This is a law. It's not, uh, please do me a favor. I like his uh, so tacky statements, man. And Governor Andro Cuomo said on criminal liability, we may be involved in a weekend drive-in concert in the Hamptons that drew a sold-out crowd as well as harsh online criticism over an apparent lack of social distancing. Who in the hell, Cuomo, is going to have social distancing? And how this happened under your government? The State of Department of Health is currently investigating the concert headlined by the Chainsmokers. Uh, images of large clouds attending Saturday's night's concerts trickled onto social media the day after the charity event, quickly inciting criticism over lacking social distancing enforcement. The idea had been to allow attendees to enjoy the performances from inside their vehicles. <laughs> Oh, and the hell is gonna stay out? It stay inside of a vehicle at a concert. <laughs> this guy, let's have a concert, and after having a concert, you guys are gonna stay inside your vehicles. You listen to me, all right? <laughs> oh my God, Cuomo, you're a joke, man. You are a joke. It is because of you that New York has a high violence. It is because of you that 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 New York has a high infested, uh, you know, infection number of people with COVID. And it is because of you this thing happens in your own backyard. In your own backyard, Cuomo. This happened in your own backyard. And now all of a sudden you're like, oh, this concert happened at driving, and they're supposed to stay in their cars. Now the Department of Health is currently investigating you and the situation and you're gonna be held accountable for this disruption. And now you're all of a sudden mad? Believe me, if the Department of Health was not going to investigate you, you will be chilling on the backyard of your house at the pool. But because of the Department of Health is investigating you, now all of a sudden you're saying, eh, there's gonna be, uh, People are going to be held accountable. There's going to be people arrested because there was no social distance. They're supposed to stay in their car and this drive-in concert. Who the hell is going to stay in the car in the drive-in concert? <laughs> Where the hell do you think that is going to happen? It's a joke. This guy's a joke. That's international news. And another international news, people. This is the most important thing. This. The vaccine has been almost they're going to release that they have it it's not too far away people and why am i saying it's not too far away remember what 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 we have been talking about for the past month 1.2 billion dollars were released to oxford university and the uk gave one one billion dollars with dominic rapp to find the cure for COVID. Cypher already has the cure. They already have it. They are trying to make believe that they are doing testing. No, they already have it. Remember that they were asking for 30,000 volunteers? 
Yes, they have it. They did a study on a chimpanzee that almost relates genetically to a human being, but they already have it. They're just looking into side effects. And apparently they have been doing some testing on human beings and apparently it works. The only thing is that it has a side effect that is anxiety. They're trying to find the, you know, the, the situation with anxiety. Supposedly they already found it also. So Cypher, the article says that the laboratory Moderna or Modern, they already have the treatment for COVID. So coronavirus tracker, the article by Fierce Pharma says, Cypher sticks to the U.S. vaccine costs developed by nations, San Sanofi, GSK lockdown, and U.K. supply deal. Why U.K. supply deal? We've been talking about how the U.K. is the greatest ally right now of the United States. And also that Dominic Rabb and uh, Mike Pompeo have been working strongly and, you know, tirelessly to find a solution for this COVID vaccine. We've been talking about that is going to be a peak between August and November because the Democrats were pushing, these leftist Democrats were pushing for a peak in August and September. Their plan has been, they've been hitting the butt. They've been hit in the butt. So now they have a cure and not only uh, they already found the cure. President Donald Trump released a statement saying, we have a vaccine that it can eventually, uh, you know, eventually be a cure for other countries. So Donald Trump is not only going to help the United States, but is going to help, it is, he is going to help the world to get a back to get the vaccine. So, the article goes on by saying this, Cypher plans to use the vaccine price set by its, its uh, U.S. supply deal for other developed nations in, inking similar orders. The U.K. locked down 60 million doses of Sanofi and GlaxoSmithKline's coronavirus hopeful. Plus, vaccine experts raise concerns about speedy and potentially sloppy coronavirus shot approval. Europe secure enough doses of guide sciences rim this to three to three thirty thousand patients what we've been talking about with plans to inquire acquire more while the u.s hospitals are reporting shortages of the antiviral in regions hard hit by the pandemic plus Takeda will likely have to delay upcoming trials on a blood plasma therapy for covid 19. so let me just find something that I got to give you guys to explain what is going on and the cost that is going to be happening for the vaccine. There's a cost and they already released how much is going to cost the vaccine. So this vaccine supposedly has antibodies. What is an antibody? The antibody is the defenses that, you know, it's going to be, you know, protecting you from getting COVID. The cost that apparently with Cypher uh, laboratories that are going to be released is between the 50 and the $60 the vaccine is going to be cost. That is the cost of the vaccine between 50 and $60. That is what they're saying, the laboratories and Cypher laboratories, 50 and sixty dollars. So people, they already have a vaccine. We knew this, but the Chinese Communist Party, they wanted to be the solution for the world. They wanted to give the vaccine into the medieval machiavellical plan until until humanity is pleading and begging for help. China was going to come out as the hero. Da da da! I'm have the vaccine, but no. They got beat by the UK and the United States. So possibly, not possibly, they have it now, but they are negotiating with Cypher uh, laboratories and you know a lot of medical departments. And also they're negotiating on the prices, but apparently it's gonna be cost 50 to $60. And they are also continuing to do testing on human beings. 
that they ask right here the article says 30,000 they are asking for 30,000 people how's everybody doing I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News and America's Voice. Man, I'm getting shadow banned. Shadow banned. Like, I don't even I don't even know what it's going on. It's been two days like that. Uh, and I believe that is the, the, the headline that I put. You know, I put China, put, you know, these kind of headlines, and they don't like that. Let me put, like, I don't know, Joe Biden, and probably I'm going to get, like, 2,000 people on the live feed. My God, these leftists, man. I wanted to put this meme picture up because i believe that this guy really is underrated and really he does not get the credit that he deserves we did a video yesterday i was driving in my car and then i parked at a at a at a supermarket and i was talking about this guy and what he has done and believe me this guy deserves this credit man <laughs> I like this image. I, I I thought that this image was crazy. I love this image, man. William Barr fighting against all these Democrats. And, you know, and this is apparently, you know, how these kind of characters, William Barr, Mike Pompeo, how they're getting criticized. By leftists, you know, by leftists, they don't have nothing else because William Barr and Mike Pompeo are defeating socialism. They are defeating socialism and they're fighting against these communist and socialist leaders. They're not backing down. I was watching the uh, the attack yesterday uh, that they were doing on William Barr, Nadler. And, uh, and and Veronica Escobar and William Barr. There was a point that he was that he was like this. Like, how much are you going to say? Like waiting for this meeting to end, and he can go back to actually saving the United States of America and giving a solution to you know to third world class countries and to help in the world. You know, he was like this. Like, okay, Veronica, you're saying all right. Okay, what I have, what have you done? And like, oh my God, I got so much work. You know, Will, uh, you know, William Barr was like, probably, my God, I got so much work right now to do. As soon as I get out of it, this place, oh, I gotta call Trump, and then I gotta talk to Mike Pompeo about the situation in Venezuela. Then I gotta talk about what is going on in space with the satellite that China is trying to put the five G. Then I gotta negotiate with you know with the UK to help us out with the vaccine. Then I gotta do this. Then I gotta do that. Important things that they're saving the world. And this man gets attacked. But this is an incredible picture. <laughs> I love it. I love this picture. I love this picture. And they have another one with his face as Mel Gibson in the in the movie of The Patriot. They have another one that I, I wanted to find that one, but I couldn't find it. But this one is an incredible picture. <laughs> I love it, man. And people are criticizing that why he did not defend himself. He doesn't have to. Why he had, why he needs to give explanations to this, you know, parasites like Veronica Escobar and William Nadler. Well, the Nadler, his name is Nadler. I don't know his first name. Why he has to give explanations to him or to Veronica? He doesn't need to. What the hell you're talking about? He's he's fighting socialist and communist countries. He has more important things to do that you know put attention to those two people. You know, I thought that it was a crazy photo. Rad. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News and America's Boys. Good morning to